Hi, I'm Eric Grant from Sarite, and today we're going to show you how to make this bucket caddy. It's made from Durawax, which is a waxed canvas that's available from Sarite in a multitude of colors. This bucket caddy features all kinds of pockets that we will show you how to fashion for your caddy that will hold all kinds of tools. And on the inside of the bucket, there are webbing straps to hold tools in place and also a variety of pockets for the inside of the bucket as well. So let's get started and show you how this is done. In this first chapter, we'll show you how to cut out the main body for your bucket caddy. We need to cut two rectangles uh, that are 20 inches by 26 inches. So I'm just marking the fabric to the appropriate size. And we are using a waxed canvas called Durawax Light, uh, available in multiple colors. You can cut Durawax canvas available from Sarite with a rotary cutter or scissors. There's no reason to use a hot knife because this is a cotton fabric, it would burn, and the edges will, will not unravel because uh, it is a uh, waxed canvas. Okay, we need to place some measurements on each one of these rectangles. This is the 26 inch side, so I'm gonna measure up from the bottom uh, 10 and a half inches and place a mark. Then I'm going to measure up from the bottom uh, 21 inches and place a mark. Okay, then this is the 20 inch side. I'm gonna measure over one inch and place a mark. Then we'll measure over on this 21 inch mark uh, one and three quarter inches and place a mark. Okay, this is the bottom edge that we determined and it is 20 inches. We need to measure over one and uh, a quarter. So we're gonna concentrate on this cutout here. But to, before we do that, we're gonna measure up eight inches. The reason I didn't do this at the beginning is I didn't want you to get confused. So eight inches there, and then we're gonna measure in one and a quarter inches here and place a mark. And then from this uh, one and a quarter to that one and a quarter, we're gonna strike a line. Okay, and then from this point, we're gonna make kind of like a natural curve. So we're gonna just freehand this. It's a gradual curve that runs into this line, like that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from this juncture to this mark here, and we're gonna strike a line, like that. Then we're gonna go from this mark to this mark and strike a line. Now really, the neat thing about this is you really only have to do one side. You don't have to mark the other sides because what we can do now is we can use our scissors and we can cut this side out and we can use this side for the opposite side. We'll use it as a template. So to, to make this a template, all we have to do is flip it over and take this one and flip it over. Lay it along the sides and then trace around it. And I'm using the Scryball uh, marking pencil white for this. Marks really well on this wax canvas. And then we cut that side out and then we can use that for the second one. So now that we have this one cut, we can use this one as a template for the second one. Just line it up so that everything is even. And if anything's slightly off, it's not gonna be a big deal. We're off here by a 16th of an inch, no big deal. We're gonna trace this one and cut it out so it's a duplicate. Before moving on to the next chapter, be sure you check out our Sayrite YouTube channel. It has hundreds of free tutorial videos that are just like this one. In this next chapter, we'll show you how to add binding and inside pockets to both panels. So we have top notch nine black one inch binding placed in our one inch swing away binder and we're gonna put it under the foot of the sewing machine. And what I like to do is I like to sew a little bit to get started. This is the 18 inch edge. So we're gonna put binding on this edge. So now I have the fabric fed up into the binder. Just make sure that it's fed into this area here. Watch the exiting point. Um, that is uh, where you want the fabric to be pushed into the fold of the binding, not the entry point. Cause notice the entry point has a curve to it, and that curve is to help prevent kinks.
Then we'll get our second panel and we'll do the same thing. Do a little bit of reversing at the beginning as well. We're gonna just trim the ends here. You could use a hot knife on this because this is a polyester, but um, the ends are gonna be sewing shut, so are sewing over, so it really isn't gonna unravel. So we're just gonna follow the shape of the bag. I'm gonna mark it five inches here. You don't necessarily have to because it really should line up, but this way we ensure that it is uh, perfectly straight, five inches down this edge. And what I wanna do is I wanna fold this, and if you've done it right, the edges should line up, and they do. So that means it's straight, so we don't really have to measure it. And notice how the wax canvas folds and creases beautifully. It stays in that position. So we'll do that with this one as well. So the bottom of this fold is 17 inches. So we'll do half of that, which is 8.5, and we'll put a little small mark down here with our uh, uh, scribe ball pencil. I'm gonna put this on four inches, and I'm gonna put a little mark here. And then four inches from here, we'll put a mark here, and we'll do the same thing to this one. So now what we're gonna do is, we're not gonna use the scribe ball pencil here because we're actually gonna sew, this is our sew line, so I don't want something that's gonna be hard to get off. So I'm just gonna scribe it. You can scribe it with this three-in-one marking tool. I wanna make sure that my clear acrylic ruler is parallel so that I make a perpendicular line up like that. So we'll do this on this one and we will also do it on that second one. So now we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew these are pockets that are going inside the barrel. I'm gonna start by doing about three stitches and forward and then doing some reversing. That should do it. So right on top of our scored line and into the uh, binding that we have there and we will do some reversing there. And then we'll move over here and do the same thing with the other ones. So exact same procedure, we'll do this to both of our sections. In this chapter, we'll show you how to add pockets to the first side of your bucket caddy. So this is a seven by seven inch pocket. This is a 16 by five inch pocket. And this is a 19 by five inch pocket. So we're gonna cut those out next. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bind here here, here, and here. We're gonna take these to the sewing machine. A little bit of reversing at the beginning. Now when I reach the end of this, I'm gonna do some reversing here, but we're actually gonna cut this with scissors and come down this side. So I've cut that edge flush, and then I'll put this back in. And remember, I like to sew a little bit in advance. And then I'm gonna put this in the binder do a little bit of reversing there. And then a little reversing here. Now we'll add binding to both of the bottom edges of our other pockets. Remember you're looking at the exiting point, not the entry point. Make sure your fabric's fed up into the exiting point. We're gonna grab one of these panels and I'm gonna measure up seven inches and strike a little mark there and then seven inches over here so that we make sure that it's straight with this bottom edge. Then I'm gonna take my clear acrylic ruler and line it up on those marks and we're actually just gonna score it at this location. So now we're gonna position our clear acrylic ruler along that uh, score line at four and a half inches from this edge. So this is four and a half inches and this will be a perpendicular line to this line that we struck. And then I'm going to score the fabric at that location. Then I'm gonna measure over four and a half again, making sure that is perpendicular. We'll add one more score mark, four and a half inches from the previous one. These score marks will help us determine where our pocket needs to be sewn in the next step. So four and a half, four and a half, four and a half from each other. So I'm gonna take my 16 by five inch uh, pocket that I made and I'm going to put a score line uh, about five and a quarter inches from this edge, which is right there. So I'm gonna score it and try to keep my hands out of the way of the camera. 
Then I'm going to measure over again five and a quarter from this new line that I just struck on, making sure that this is perpendicular or parallel with this edge. So I make a perpendicular line. And now that should be my two sew locations. Uh, this should equal about five and a half, five and a quarter, and it does. So what we're going to do with these two marks we made on the pocket is we're going to bring it over to this bag where we put these score marks on. And it's going to go on like this. You can see the score mark here and here because I went a little bit beyond. We're going to sew it here. And then we're going to actually move this over and we're going to sew this here. And this will be moved over and we'll sew this right along this edge with about a quarter inch excess fabric. Okay, well before we sew these in place over top of this line, we're going to sew this outer edge. And the fabric is lined up with that score line, the binding is, and it's lined up with that edge. Now we're eventually going to put binding on this, so we don't want to sew very far into the bag because we want this stitch to be hidden by our binding. So I'm going to sew very close to this raw edge. A little bit of reversing. Get down here, do a little bit of reversing. Okay. And then we'll lift our foot, we'll move our fabric over, we'll make sure it's lined up against that line, we'll move our canvas, wax canvas over, so that it's lined up with that line on, that we put on the, uh, the body. Yep, right there. And we will sew this location, doing some reversing. Make sure you do quite a bit of reversing here because this has to hold well. And then down to the bottom and do some reversing. Oops, I got my threads all stuck on my binder. Okay. And then we go over here and we position this on our score line. And we sew here, doing some reversing. Keep getting threads stuck on that binder. There we go. And reverse at the bottom. Now we'll come over here to our last one. And we'll move our wax canvas over so that it's about a quarter inch or so from that line and we will sew here, very close to that edge, because we're going to have another piece, a pocket on top of this, so don't make it too far in, just about where I have it. Okay, so now we're going to sew along the bottom of this, but we have some excess fabric in here, obviously, to hold tools and such. So what we want to do is we want to just create a fold on the left side and the right side of each of the pockets. And this fold doesn't have to be terribly accurate. We just want to take out that excess fabric so we have a straight line at the bottom like that. So what I'll do is I'll just push on it because wax canvas has a memory and that should stay there. I don't have to pin it or anything. And I'll do the same thing with this one. I'll kind of create a fold here and a fold here. And that's a straight line across here. And then with this last one, kind of create a fold here and a fold here. If the fold isn't deep enough, you can modify it like that. And then that should give us the ability to sew straight across this line and build some shape into those pockets. So I'm going to sew about a quarter inch from this edge here and we'll do some reversing here. Keep those folds in place. So I'm going to use this foot as a guide to uh, show where I'm sewing. This is going to be hidden by another pocket that goes on top. So we know that fold goes like that. And then I come up to this one. Looks good like that. There, that looks really good. So position each one of these as you get to them. And then when I get to here, I do some reversing. There we go. This is our 19 by five inch pocket. We're going to mark uh, or score it at six and a quarter inches from this edge. So six and a quarter here. And my line is uh, going to be perpendicular to the long edges. Score it there. 
and then we measure over six and a quarter from that line. And it can be off a little bit if you, it, it can be six and a half if you want to. You can actually make these pockets anything you want, but I'm going by a standard six and a quarter. So two lines on this. And then what we do is we take this panel that we just finished and we will line these lines up with that sew line, that sew line, these edges will be sewed, sewn, and this edge will be sewn with the bottom edge flush. So this is our pocket here. We're gonna line it up to the bottom edge. We're gonna line this edge up to this edge. And we are going to sew basically in the same spot that we sewed with the first pocket that's underneath here, very close to that edge. Do some reversing. Reversing. Okay, now we'll lift it up and we'll move it over to this location here where this stitch is and we will position this right along that edge so that it's perfectly straight with that edge and we'll sew this down right in line with that previous stitch. Make sure you do some reversing here. This is going to be under stress. Okay, and then we're going to move the canvas over again and do the same thing here. And then our final will be lined up with this edge like that. And we'll sew that in place. So now we're going to put on the uh, seven by seven inch pocket and we want to put it over this edge here. So this bind binding edge will go uh, so that it overlaps. And I, what I like to do is I like to match this edge up with the binding here. And then that way I can sew right on top of that stitch line here and uh, secure it in place. Then this edge will be folded over and it'll be sewn right there. To avoid having to put all this material through the throw of the sewing machine, I'm gonna turn it, flip it so that I'm working from the bottom edge. So first I'm gonna sew this in place. And we wanna sew fairly close to this edge again because this stitch is gonna be hidden by binding in a future step. Okay, now we come over here and we crinkle this up. Put it on top of this here. Make sure this edge is lined up. It's better to be off at the bottom if you're gonna be off anywhere. And we will sew. I'm not gonna sew right onto this stitch because that'll put it pretty close. I'm gonna sew right next to it. Not a big deal. Yeah, that should look good. Do some reversing there. I'm going to do some reversing here too, just to secure that pocket well. And then when I get to the top, I will do some reversing here. Unfortunately, my thread was caught on the binder again. I don't want to take the binder off because I still have a lot more binding to do, but uh, my threads keep getting caught on these screws. So to sew this bottom edge, we need to again create shape into these pockets and I like to l level it out from each side. So I'm gonna do that with each one of these pockets. This is the same process as sewing the bottom that we did at the other pocket. Just keep that stitch at up against the raw edge, mainly because we're going to have binding here and we want the stitch to kind of be hidden underneath the binding. Now we're not going to bind here. We're going to bind here, down, and up to the other side over here. So we're going to start right here. I'm going to lower my foot and sew like I normally do a few inches. I mean a few stitches, I should say. And we do have to keep this, this fabric pushed into the fold of the binder. So I'm going to do a little bit of reversing here. 
and then I'm going to concentrate on the exiting point. I'm going around a curve here and wax canvas is pretty stiff so it doesn't like to go around this curve so I have to push the fabric into that curve. So notice how I'm pushing the fabric in there. And when I get to this bottom edge, I'm going to do some reversing. And then I'm going to take it out and I'm going to cut that edge with scissors. So we got the binding on nicely. Pull some of this binding out. Cut it flush. So if your bottom edge is not perfectly straight across here, it'll cause problems with your binding. So what you want to do is trim off anything that's not totally flush. There's a lot of binding there. There, so now we have a perfectly flush edge. I'm going to put this bottom edge on now um, and sew across it. Doing some reversing here. So here we're coming to the end and we'll do some reversing there again. And then we'll cut this one more time. Flush with the edge. And then we can put this back in. So a couple stitches. And sew over this. And what we want to do is we want to sew in this curve again, keeping the curve well inside the machine. I'm going to do a little bit of reversing here. You really should put in the presser feet with the teeth because it's not feeding this wax canvas as well with the, uh, I believe this is a leather foot in here. I'm going to probably change that foot out, show you the difference. When we get to this corner, I'm going to sew off the corner and do a reversing. We're going to put the tempered cutting glass uh, here and use the serrated edge hot knife. This is the cordless version and I'm going to touch the binding so it doesn't unravel. In this next chapter, we'll show you how to add pockets to the second side of your caddy. So I've marked uh, two pockets for the other side. These are different pockets. They will include screwdrivers. This is 21 inches long by five inches wide, and this one is 21 inches long by five inches wide. What I want to do with one of them is taper it. So I'm going to measure over 11 inches, place a mark here, and then I'm going to measure from this side three inches up and place a mark here. And what I will do is I will mark a angled side here from here to, to there. So 11 inches from here, three inches from here, we have a wedge. This will be waste. We also need another seven by seven inch square. So we're going to sew binding onto the top of this the top of this, the top of this, and down this side. Cut the binding with a hot knife. That'll keep it from unraveling because it's not a wax canvas. This is our second piece and it's going to have the location for the screwdriver. So I'm going to mark it seven inches here and seven inches here so that we have a straight line. And then I'm going to score it again like we did on the other one. You can use an awl to score it too. Now we'll score the panel with the lines that will determine the size of our pockets. We'll show you what it looks like when we're done. One inch, one inch from this line, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and a half, two inches, two inches, and two and a half. This is the pocket that doesn't have the curve in it. It is the 21 by five inch pocket. And we're gonna start here at the right side and we're gonna score it at two inches basically one inch bigger than our uh, one inch location on our body. Two inches again. Two inches. Two inches again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 
two and a half inches, two and a half inches here, and then three inches. and two and a half inches. Now this can, you can vary these if you want. I mean, we're just trying to make bigger pockets for tools and so forth, but this is what we're, what we're doing. Starting from the right side, the tapered side, we're gonna measure in three inches. Then we're gonna measure two inches. I should put this up here so I can do it a little bit easier. So this is two inches. This is two inches again. Ah, shoot. Gotta be more careful. And then two and a quarter. And then five inches. This is a Sayrite Leatherwork sewing machine and it has a special leather foot that does not have very aggressive teeth. We used it for half of our project. We do believe that the presser foot that has the knurled teeth is gonna do a better job. So we're gonna change it out for this and do the remainder of our project with it. This is our uh, panel that does not have the curve in it and it is gonna be lined up with this line at the top here. And I, originally I sewed this side on first. I think I'll sew that on last. So I'm gonna line up this line with the line that we struck on the fabric and the top edge with the binding at the top here. So this process is basically the same. Now, I did not change out the feed dog. I just have the knurled teeth on top now. And we think that this is actually gonna feed a little bit better. And I also removed the binder attachment because the thread kept getting stuck on the binder. And I'll have to put it on later when I have to sew the binding on the edges of this. Oh yeah, this is feeding much better already, I can tell. We needed a little bit more gripping power. Now I don't have to worry about that uh, binder getting stuck either. So now I'm gonna move this over to the other line, just like we did with the previous one. This is a little bit smaller, so it'll have less space, but uh, it's still pretty easy to do. So there we have it lined up perfectly and we sew this one. We'll just do this down the uh, entire length of this pocket. Okay, we're just gonna fold the bottom like this to take up the excess on all these pockets. Now, the smaller they get, the more difficult it'll be, but it, it doesn't have to be all to one side if you want. You can make it a little bit off. So again, we're gonna sew this with the outside presser foot here, so our stitch is about a quarter inch into that, uh, above that bottom edge because this is the stitch that's gonna hold the tool. So I'm gonna do some reversing there and sew across. Now you may notice that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seams here, um, counting the ends. So that, and on this one we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're minus one. So what you can do is you can decide where these seams are gonna fall. We want them to fall on the to, uh, directly parallel with these stitch lines, but you can skip one, you, whether it be skipping one here at the end or whether it be skipping one at this end. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna sew this down over here and we're going to sew this one here so that I have a really nice large pocket for say a tape measure. So I'm gonna skip this seam in here. You can do whatever you want, but that's what we're gonna do. So there's our first score mark, there's our first stitch. I'm not gonna sew this end first, I'm gonna sew this down first. It goes so that it's flush with the bottom edge down here. I can see my score mark there, so I know it's lined up. And I will splay this fabric out of the way so that I can get my presser foot in at that location, making sure that everything is still lined up. And we'll start sewing right here. Do some reversing. Okay, then I'm gonna lift my foot. I am going to splay this apart so I can see my stitch. 
I'm going to move my canvas over, line it up with that stitch like that, line this up with the bottom edge like that, and then we'll position our presser foot and sew this next pocket. And we'll do this down the entire line um, where we want each pocket to go. This is our seven by seven inch pocket. This binding goes over here. This binding goes along the top. It'll be sewn on like this, and this will be folded over like that. We're gonna sew that on next. We're not gonna show that. Okay, so now we'll just create the uh, folds at the bottom of our bag, trying to make sure that the bottom edge is lined up as best as possible. Now we'll take it to the sewing machine and sew along that bottom edge. Binding has to go on next, so we want to make sure that this edge, if it has any inconsistencies, it's trimmed so that the binding can go on easily. Okay, as we sew this last side on here, I'm going to put a uh, Sayerite tag on it right at this location. So watch what we do. So we're putting the binding on the last side. got a little bit of curve here. I'm going to get through this and do a little bit of reversing there. So once I get past that, I'm going to take my tag and I'm going to put it in up into that fold. So once it's in position, remember we have a curve here too. We just hold it in position and I got to work that fabric into that uh, binder. So it exits at the appropriate spot following the curve. And when we get to that tippy tip, we do some reversing. And they're done. We're gonna trim off the excess with a hot knife. If you don't have this, you can use scissors and a lighter and carefully do it. That'll keep the uh, binding from unraveling. Just like we did on the other one. In this chapter, we'll show you how to add webbing loops to your caddy. I've got one and a half inch uh, black nylon webbing here, and I need two strips that out of the one and a half inch wide, they're 11 inches in length. And I like to use a hot knife because that seals the webbing and keeps it from unraveling. If you don't have this, you can use a scissors and a lighter to seal the edges. We'll also need another one out of the one and a half inch webbing that is seven inches in length. This is one inch uh, nylon uh, webbing and I need to cut two three inch strips out of it. We're going to use the one and a half inch that's cut to 11 inch and the one inch that's cut to three inch and we're going to put it on this side of the bag and then we're going to do the same thing for this one. Uh, we will not show that and then I'll show you what I do with this last one. So we're going to take this and we're going to mark it at two inches and then here at two inches. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in because this is going to have a box X stitch and a box X stitch. So we're going to fold this in like this and then we're going to sew a straight stitch uh, so that we get a nice, uh, it's not really a handle, it's really for hanging a tool, but it's not as wide, so it should work better. So you can see that I folded just shy of that line that we struck down and I folded the uh, webbing over top of itself. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. I'm just going to create a nice double fold here encasing it in the middle and then I'm going to sew a straight stitch doing some reversing here then fold in and over in and over and then there's my line here so I'm going to do some reversing right here and we'll end it. And we'll do that with the uh, second strip as well. So that gives us a fairly nice uh, hanging spot for a tool. Okay, this is one side of the bag. We're going to put a mark at two inches with my uh, scry ball pencil. This will be sewn on in that two inch location and you can open it or close it for whatever you want. Um, it's, your, it's your preference. I've decided to put it here, so I'm going to actually put a, a little mark here to indicate where I want it, which is basically right across from this seam. I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, we're going to take this to the machine and sew it. 
Okay, we're gonna start. You can sew a box X or you can sew several rows of a straight stitch. Uh, it's, it's your preference with doing some reversing. I think I'm gonna do a box X. <laughs> Then I can reverse this assembly around here like that with my needle buried and I can sew down. Needles buried. I can pivot or sew in reverse really is what I'll do. So I'll lower the foot, sew in reverse. Then I'm gonna sew Diagonally. Then I'm going to sew in reverse across that top. Needles buried, lift the foot and sew diagonally across this way. Needles buried, lift the foot, sew in reverse backwards. Then I'm going to turn it around and finish up this last leg. So some reversing. And there we go. We're going to put this three inch uh, strip two inches up from the um, bottom edge of this uh, pocket and centered in between this assembly. So right there. And again, when I take it to the machine, I don't want to have to guess. So I'm going to mark the corners. So now here, I'm going to let this lay flat. It doesn't have to. If you wanted to put some shape in it, you could, but I'm just going to put it in flat so that I can put like a tape measure here or something like that. And I'm only going to sew a straight stitch, reversing several times on each side, like that. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll do the same process for this and this on the opposite half. We'll not show that. And our, our last seven inch by one and a half inch webbing will be folded in half and sewn about an inch from this uh, pocket edge here. We're gonna sew this here with just a straight stitch reversing, but we're not gonna do just one stitch. We're gonna move it over and do a second stitch that's approximately a quarter inch from the first. Reversing a few times and that's in. Okay, so the last thing to do, unless you want to put webbing anywhere else, you can do whatever you want. That's the beauty of these types of projects. They're DIY projects, so you can make them to whatever you want. We'll put outside surfaces facing each other like this. We will sew here, reversing several times at the beginning and the end leave this unsewn and sew here reversing several times at the beginning and the end. When this edge is lined up we're going to sew a half inch from that edge. Um, nothing else reinforces this except for this stitch so we want to sew well within this edge. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so all we need to do now is insert it in our five gallon bucket. Bottom goes in. And the handle, where's the handle? There it is. I push all this fabric past the handle. in the middle. If it isn't, just adjust your canvas until it is. You can actually push it down a little bit more if you'd like. I'm going to push this down a little bit more. And that 
is the position that I like it. And there's what the inside looks like. These obviously could be adjusted to whatever size you want to hold whatever power tool you have, whether it be a drill or a hammer or anything you want. And then you have internal pockets as well to store even more tools. There we go. We used Durowax Light to complete this project. It's a wax canvas that's available in multiple colors at sailrite.com. Next up is a list of the materials and tools we used to complete this project. If you have any questions about the tools or materials we used in making this bucket caddy, give us a call at Sailrite. We're glad to help. From all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.